What happens to your body if you don't eat for long? Imagine making a decision that could literally turn you into a walking skeleton within three weeks. A decision that would make your own hair fall out, your heart struggle to beat, and your brain start playing tricks on you so vivid that you'd swear that pillow next to you just turned into a cheeseburger. Now, now I'm not talking about some extreme diet here. I'm talking about what happens when your body goes into full survival mode, when you completely stop eating. And trust me, what I'm about to show you will make you never take your next meal for granted again. But here's the crazy part. Did you know some people have survived over a year without solid food? Stick around, because by the end of this video, you'll understand exactly how that's possible and more importantly, why you should never ever try it. All right, let's say you've decided for whatever reason that you're done eating. Maybe it's a protest, maybe you're trapped somewhere, or maybe you're just curious about what would happen. Here's your timeline to disaster. Hour six, the hunger games begin. Six hours in and your body's already sounding the alarm bells. That last meal you ate, gone. Broken down, absorbed, used up. Your brain starts sending out those feed me signals, releasing a hormone called ghrelin that literally makes you anxious and irritable. You know that feeling when you get hangry? Yeah. That's just the appetizer to this horror show. Day one, false hope. Day one hits and here's where it gets weird. You might actually feel more energetic than yesterday. Your body's like that friend who says they're totally fine after three cups of coffee and no sleep, running on fumes, but convinced they're invincible. But here's what's really happening. Your body is desperately pulling every last bit of glucose from your bloodstream. It's like emptying your gas tank to the very last drop before the engine starts sputtering. Day two, day three, welcome to ketosis. By day two, things get serious. Your glucose completely gone. Your liver kicks into emergency mode, producing something called ketone bodies, basically your brain's backup fuel when the good stuff runs out. Think of it like switching from premium gas to whatever you can find at a sketchy gas station at 2 a.m. It'll keep you running, but not for long, and definitely not smoothly. Day three is when your body officially declares war on itself. It starts cannibalizing your fat and carb stores, basically eating itself to stay alive. You're losing weight fast, but not in the beach body ready way, more like the concerned friends staging an intervention way. The crisis. Now we're entering the danger zone. That's where things go from uncomfortable to genuinely terrifying. Day five, going feral. Five days in, and you're basically a cornered wild animal in human clothing. Your brain can't function properly, so those civilized, rational thoughts? Yeah, they're on vacation. You're running on pure survival instinct now. Your digestive system starts shutting down. It's like your body's decided to close non-essential businesses during an economic crisis. But here's the kicker. As it shuts down, you start having explosive diarrhea, which strips away even more of the few nutrients you have left. Day seven, breaking down the house. Week one, and your body has officially run out of everything easy to burn. Fat stores, gone. Carbs, ancient history. So what does it do? Ancient, it starts tearing apart your own muscles, including your heart, to keep your brain powered up. Let that sink in for a second. Your body is literally eating your heart to keep you conscious. It's like burning your furniture to heat your house. Sure, it works temporarily, but you're destroying the very thing you need to survive. Day 10, The Walking Dead. Day 10, you're basically a zombie. 
you can't lift your head, light hurts your eyes, and your immune system has basically put up a gone fishing sign. A simple cold could finish you off because your body has zero resources left to fight anything. But wait, it gets worse. Your teeth start decaying, your hair falls out in clumps, and your bones become so brittle they might snap if you move wrong. You're not just hungry anymore, you're literally decomposing while still alive. Days 14 to 21, the final countdown. Two weeks in, and you're basically a skeleton wrapped in skin. Your heart is struggling to pump blood, your brain is shutting down non-essential functions, and every breath is a monumental effort. By day 21, if you somehow make it that far, your nervous system gives up. By day, your heart stops, your brain goes dark, and that's it, game over. All because you decided to stop putting food in your mouth. The resolution, recovery, and exceptions. Now, before you think this is just a horror story with no happy ending, let me tell you about the recovery process and some absolutely mind-blowing exceptions to these rules. The road back. If someone finds you before it's too late, the road back is almost as dangerous as the starvation itself. Doctors can't just hand you a burger and call it a day. Your body is so damaged that overeating too fast could kill you. They start with IV fluids, antibiotics for the infections ravaging your compromised immune system, and tiny amounts of easily digestible nutrients. It's like slowly teaching your body how to be human again. The incredible exceptions. Here's where it gets wild, and this might blow your mind. Remember I mentioned someone surviving over a year without food? Meet Angus Barbieri. This absolute unit went 382 days, over a year, consuming nothing but tea, coffee, water, soda, and vitamins. He went from 472 pounds to 178 pounds, under medical supervision, of course, but still 382 days. Can you imagine explaining that to your friends? Sorry, can't make it to dinner tonight or for the next 13 months? Why some survive longer? India's founder, Mr. Gandhi, lasted 21 days on just water. Some hunger strikers have made it 40 days. The difference? Body fat percentage, medical supervision, supplements, and most importantly, the mental state. See, when you're in actual survival mode, trapped, scared, adrenaline pumping, your body burns through resources way faster than when you're making a conscious choice to fast. It's the difference between your car idling in traffic versus flooring it on the highway. Look, I know this was intense and honestly pretty disturbing, but here's what I want you to take away from this. Every single meal you eat is keeping you alive in ways you probably never think about. That sandwich you had for lunch? Those vitamins and glucose are powering your brain right now to process these words. That's pretty incredible when you think about it. If this video made you appreciate your next meal a little bit more, or if you learned something that genuinely surprised you, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. We dive deep into fascinating topics like this every week. And trust me, your brain will thank you for the knowledge. Next week, we're exploring what happens to your body if you never move. And spoiler alert, it's almost as terrifying as this. You don't want to miss it. Until then, go eat something delicious, appreciate the fact that your body is an incredible survival machine, and I'll see you in the next one.